Hello everybody, this is Bodrich and um, yeah, I made this. Here's the level select. I can use the arrow keys here to select the level. And as you can see, it updates here the information about how many points you get for one, two, three lines and a Tetris and at uh, how many lines you need to advance to the next uh, level. And you can also press A to toggle and that just toggles here between high and low levels. Uh, so for hardcore players, they press A and, and uh, then run one of these levels, you know. And then you just select it with Enter, and then you can play this version of um, a Tetris-like game that I made in uh, Bash. Um, it is not 100% uh, complete yet. There are some things I would uh, like to do before calling it a day. You know, uh, it would be nice to have, for example, colors. Uh, right now, it's it's only foreground, background color. Uh, whatever those are, you know, it all depends on the term terminal. Well, maybe I should try to play a game uh, so you can see at least a line clear, you know, and see how it works. Uh, and I tried to build this game in in um, like pure bash. Uh, there are just uh, a couple of teapot commands uh, that I use just for convenience. I could as well uh, just uh, write the, the escape codes that those uh, teapot commands uh, produce. But yeah, it doesn't matter. It, it is really pure uh, bash here. Um, now I have learned a lot of things uh, doing this little project here and this is actually uh, my second uh, game <laughs> thing i've been doing this uh, month here i also made a game of life uh, simulator thing and after i had done that i thought maybe i can use some of the things i learned here and and make uh, like uh, yeah a tetris block falling like game there we had some error i don't know what that is about as you can see it is not perfectly complete yet but and there are some some weird stuff going on when you rotate blocks and and things like that but i thought maybe instead of me just sitting here alone in my cave you know and fiddling with my stupid uh, bash game here why not uh, do this together with you guys uh, and um, let's make a game Maybe we should make Tetris, maybe a, a different game, I don't know. If you have any suggestions, whatever. Uh, I thought in this video we can make this, we can make a, a, a level select screen. Let's just do this, you know. Um, what do we have here? Ten different levels here, this, this part. Um, Uh, yeah, let, let's just make 10 different levels or objects like this that we can navigate with, with the arrow keys uh, that I'm using here. Uh, that should highlight a different object. We can start with that, you know, and, and just doing that thing will uh, 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 open the doors for some, some cool um, things you can do. <laughs> let's analyze this a bit, uh, what's going on here. One thing is that we don't have a prompt, we just have a terminal window now. Uh, the prompt is gone, the cursor is really gone, uh, and instead we are moving this thing here. Uh, but we are abiding all the terminal rules, uh, like only displaying uh, text. And this, even this black rectangle is of course text, we're using like box drawing characters and things like that. That is the limit we are working with, you know. Uh, and in this uh, screen here, we are only using foreground, background, color. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's let's do this. And I prepared it a bit here. Um, I created a new project called Bud Lanes. It's the Bud Lab Games uh, department. Um, and I created a script called Level Select, made it executable. Uh, but that is uh, all I have done. Um, and we can also, I thought, copy paste some, some of the code I got here for, I got this init screen here method. Can just paste it here. 
and then we can do init screen. Uh, and what this does is uh, basically turning off uh, the, the cursor. Uh, SM cup, not really 100% sure if it brings the cursor to the top corner, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. And clears the screen here. Basically, this just clears the screen. So if we would uh, do a read here, or we can do it here, we can see it. And then it also set up uh, two traps here. Yeah, we need to, to make this, uh, we actually don't need this resize trap. Uh, and if you uh, know your uh, bash scripts, you might uh, see here that I have basically borrowed <laughs> the uh, function functionality here from pipes.sh uh, which is this uh, unix porn uh, program you know that displays a bunch of pipes i don't have it installed but whatever uh, but this trap is good here clean up so we need a function called clean up that will get triggered on the uh, hang up signal, terminate signal, exit signal, and interrupt signal. And that is like control C and stuff, you know. Uh, and what we do uh, at cleanup is, uh, I think we can do is teapot reset. I think that's enough. Yeah, let's just do that here. All right, let's test this. Level select. There. Now we just got a blank screen here. If I type something, nothing happens because we don't echo is turned off, so it doesn't echo things back to the screen. We just have a blank terminal canvas, you could think of it as. And we cannot escape, press escape, nothing happens. Only way to get out of this is uh, control C here, then it will trigger the uh, interrupt signal. And it uh, should trigger this cleanup. Not sure if it did here. Oh, I'm not sure what, what happened there. Pressing Ctrl C, getting here. Pressing Enter, getting here. Let's see what I have in, in reset uh, cleanup. Okay, we got a bunch of other stuff here. Let's add, copy this as well. As you can see, it, it kind of it, it resets uh, everything, and that's what we want to want to do. And this is what I meant uh, by not using like 100% pure Bash, you know, because Teapot isn't really part of Bash. It's it's like a, a external program, really, you know. But all Teapot does really is uh, printing escape sequences, and those escape sequences you could print them uh, uh, using printf, which is built into Bash. Uh, I think printf is built into bash. Maybe printf is also a separate... No, printf is a built-in uh, uh, shell command. So that's not uh, cheating. And I don't think this is cheating either. Maybe this stty thing... Whatever. Now if we run level select, press ctrl c, it will reset everything back to normal. The only thing is that uh, it will, uh, we will lose all previous information in the terminal because it will clear the screen here. Uh, and that is something uh, I think you can actually uh, write programs that uh, go into a, a, a new screen, so to speak. And then when you exit out of the programs, you will, uh, the old, old uh, terminal state will, will be there, you know. But I don't know how to do that. I haven't really looked into it. Just came to think of it now when I started recording this, that that is uh, how many other programs, for example, if we do uh, echo hello, and then we can do htop. That is also a terminal program, you know, opens in full screen, I press Q, and then it exits the program and we got all uh, the terminal. It, it, it's like it opens in a new, uh, what to call it, new buffer, new window or something. We're not doing that here yet. Maybe I will look into how to do that, uh, but uh, not today. And also, the reason I added read here, if we did remove that and run the script, then you see it just clears the screen because it, uh, uh, when it reaches the end of the script, it uh, uh, sends the exit uh, signal and then it executes the init screen or the, the cleanup function here, so, so nothing <laughs> happens. 
And that is maybe the important uh, thing here today uh, is to talk a little bit about read. Uh, so read, if you just type read, then uh, that means prompt for read uh, input from standard in by default. Uh, maybe, maybe, let's also comment this guy out now. So now it will not uh, clear, clear the screen or anything. Uh, and then we can do echo. I have read. Uh, yeah. And now we just get this stupid prompt here. We type stuff, type stuff, press enter, and then it print uh, the read command is finished, and it just prints this. Uh, by default, uh, the value you uh, enter to read is stored in a variable called uh, reply, all uppercase. So typing, pressing enter, I have read value you entered to read typing. So typing is what's stored in the uh, built-in variable reply. Uh, but you can also change the name of this variable or use a, a different name, a placeholder, like uh, placeholder here. And if we run the script now, I think we'll get the same result. Same result, enter. No, now we don't have any reply here because now reply is replaced by this variable instead. So now if we wanted to, to use the, the value, we have to use placeholder here. Like that. Um, so that's like the, the, the simplest version of read. Uh, but when you're making a game uh, and want to use read here, what we want to do is, is uh, uh, react on one key press. Uh, and now we have now it just reads here for uh, a line basically. When you press enter, it stops reading. It stops reading on new lines. Uh, but if you only want uh, to listen for one key, then you can use uh, n and then the number of, of characters you want to, to read, uh, one. And yeah, that's important, the number of characters you want to read. It's not the number of key presses you want to read. We get back to that very soon here. So now if we try this, level select, and then I uh, start typing something, I, I, I will now type something. Some, well, I just pressed S, and as you can see, the S is printed, and then immediately it uh, echoes, I have read here, so, so we even get the S printed here, and then you have entered to read S. So it immediately terminates when it have uh, read one character, it will stop the read uh, function here. Most of the time you don't want that character printed like that, and then you can use also the silent option, S. So th this is really like this, you know, silent and then the number of uh, characters to read. So now it will not print the S. Um, you can also use T option and that means uh, uh, timeout, timeout number of seconds. So now uh, it will wait if, if I haven't pressed the key uh, after one second, it will uh, s uh, terminate the read loop and placeholder will be empty. Not typing, and then I have read, you have entered to read nothing. Now you see we are getting somewhere. Uh, and one second is not... Uh, you, you can actually wait. See, here you can use... Uh, 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 um, decimal point here to wait for maybe 0 0.01 second and that is like uh, 10 milliseconds so there you can see it, it just immediately it felt like and we can see the execution time here of the whole script was 60 milliseconds so so it, it more or less immediately uh, uh, ignored this read um, and placeholder. Let, let, let's uh, type key here instead, since we are uh, reading one key. What we can do here is uh, do a 
what's called an event loop or main loop or whatever. While colon or while true, basically, you know, colon do done. So this is a loop that will loop forever. And then we can uh, tr uh, try to read a key here. Um, and then we can make a test. Or maybe this, if, if key is not empty. Then we can do this. And we can, we can say, I'll change this. You entered key. Now we can do press any key to continue. And then we can do a read SM1. You can also type it like this. I think you can type it like that. Maybe you should do that. Like that. And then you, you, because yeah, press any key to continue. This is just an empty read that we not uh, we only use it to, to pause the script until we have uh, pressed the key here. Then it will go back into the loop, uh, reading for key presses, timeout after after 10 milliseconds, test if we have entered the key. If we did enter a key, it will tell us that. If we didn't, it will go back and read for a new key, whatever. Now it looks like this. We, we still got the, the read thing here. I press uh, S. You entered S, press any key to continue. And then I can press uh, T. And then, now nothing happened really, you know, because uh, now it waits for a new key. If I press T again, you enter T. Press any key to continue, I press W. Nothing happens, I press W again. That, all right. We're getting somewhere. Now, I don't know if uh, how CPU intensive this is, maybe it's also the recording, but I have really uh, tried to do that as well. I've lear learned that on uh, Game of Life, uh, that you can actually uh, kind of bloat, <laughs> bloat the bash scripts uh, quite a bit uh, doing these things if they are not done correctly. Um, also, Shell check uh, uh, gives us an error here um, or a warning uh, that you should not use read without R uh, because that will mangle backslashes. I'm, I'm not really 100% sure what, what it means, but let's just give it an R so it shut, shuts up, you know. And now we don't get those warnings. Uh, I haven't found any um, like not using R have never caused any issues for me really, except that uh, error message from Shellcheck. And using it haven't uh, caused any issues either. So I, I always use R here with read. Okay, so... Um, if we want to listen for the arrow keys, or let's start with this. Let, let, let's use to, to make it a little bit simple. You will see soon why this is much easier. Let's use the, the VI navigation, you know, uh, H for left, J for down, K for up and L for right. And then we can do a case here. Case key in H. Uh, then we can do it D equals left. And then colon colon, and then we have a um, uh, uh, down up right, and then we have an Isaac, and then we have J K L right up down right. Uh, and if we if it's any other key, then we can continue. And what continue here does is uh, continuing the loop. And the loop is here is the closest loop, you know, the while loop. So it will not do anything. It, it will kind of break out of the case and also uh, start reading a new key. So it will only accept H, J, K, and L keys here now. 
Um, and then let, let, let's skip this guy. And then we can say you, you direction D or something here. Right? Let's run this. Just wait here. I press uh, H, direction left. I press H again, direction left. I press J, direction down. L, right, K, up. And you see, it's pretty responsive here. And it's all because uh, this timeout, uh, 10 milliseconds here. You can actually use uh, more decimals here, but I have found that w if you make this timeout too short, then, then you might get weird errors. Like this sometimes just works works out. Sometimes it works, but uh, yeah, you can see it, it, it kind of works fine here. And you can even hold the key down here. And this, this is another thing when you're writing games. This uh, key auto fire or repeat thing here. Here we can see a weird thing. It somehow entered a J here, so sometimes it borks up here when you are, yeah, sometimes it didn't uh, uh, silence the key. And I think that is because we have a too narrow uh, uh, timeout here. But this auto fire, that is something that, that you set with X uh, set, I believe, or maybe your desktop environment, it can, uh, uh, all kinds of factors factor in, you know, like uh, the speed of the terminal itself. Uh, maybe a game looks fine in your XVT and then I uh, run it in, in a different terminal. That might uh, change the, the frame rate, update rate and things like that. And also this out of fire stuff. So, so it's not a, a super fun and friendly uh, game developer uh, development environment. Uh, and maybe you shouldn't write games that, that uh, care about those things, but whatever, we do that anyways. Okay, we are listening, listening for H, A, K and L. Uh, but what if we want to listen for uh, the arrow keys? That's a completely different story. Here's a very useful tip. Press, uh, go into a terminal and then press Control V. Nothing seems to happen. But now if you press, for example, left arrow here, it will print this because control V uh, it makes it so that it will print uh, the code for the next uh, character if I press backspace here now I press control V now I press backspace we get this control V I press tab well then we got a tab control V I press escape we get this this is the escape character interesting um, and we can test the other Let's do this. Uh, so left arrow is this. Uh, and then we have, let's do, do them in the same order as here. Uh, J uh, or down arrow is this. Up arrow is this. And right arrow is this. These are the escape codes. And uh, this is actually one character, but this is one character and this is one character. And this means that uh, these keys, when you press the arrow keys, they actually produce three characters. The, an escape character and then like an escape code here, basically. And that escape code consists of two characters. And read here, it reads one character. So if you press uh, uh, left in this loop here, you will only, uh, uh, this read will only store the first character. So that is um, uh, something we have to work around to be able to use uh, arrow keys here. So I found a good solution for this. I think I have to cheat a bit here. Yeah, here, I found it on, on Stack Overflow someone who had had the same issue here. So I will link this uh, in the show notes. You can even open it here. See what it looks like. Yeah, here is some, someone who have done this. I, I modified it quite a little bit, but uh, uh, what it basically does, it does a read for read one character. Yeah, here we can see we, can, we also don't need a space between N and one here. 
So it reads one character, and then it tests if that character is uh, the escape character, which looks like this. Uh, if it is the escape character, then it read the, the, the next two characters. So that means uh, and store those two characters in uh, 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 in a variable called mode here. And that means that we can uh, test for up, down, left, and right by using these two last characters. Whatever, I will link this in the show notes. As, as you can see, it's just a couple of lines. It's, it's just weird, but this is how it works, you know. Um, there is no uh, character for left. What we really do is sending an escape character to the terminal, telling it that we want to move the cursor to the left. And that operation is done by using these escape codes uh, uh, and sending a series of escape characters. And it's the same thing for clearing the screen and everything that is kind of using the same uh, method. Just happens that some keys on the keyboard produce this uh, uh, escape code codes automatically for us. So let's copy this here into our level select. So yeah, now I call this key. So I guess we should do that here. Uh, and I wrote it like this, uh, instead of storing this in a variable, I test the value immediately for this backslash u1b, which is, that is that first escape character here. There are even other ways to write this, whatever. Uh, and then it immediately reads uh, the next two keys. That means we got here a, b, d, and c for right, down, left, and right. Uh, and if we want to use both H, J, K, and L and arrow keys, we can absolutely do that by just uh, doing this, you know. So either if it's right key or L, whatever, you get it. Let's copy this. Do this, and then we have A. Or we don't. We have D and we have uh, B and we have A, I guess. Up and then we we'll remove this guy. And this is also good to use this met method here. I, I have seen others who always do three reads and then test if the uh, concurrent reads are contain anything. But here it only does this second read uh, uh, operation if the first, if the character is the escape character. Um, yeah, let's try this. Pressing H, direction left. Pressing up arrow. Direction up, down arrow, down. And it is pretty responsive and works just fine. Yeah, sometimes it prints the... And it's always the J, right? Yeah, for some reason it sometimes prints the J here. It's, it's really weird. Um, whatever. Control C breaks out, uh, and now we don't get any clean uh, screen or anything. Um, another thing here now, when you are making a game, is that you don't really want to just echo things, because that echo, by default, you know, it, it also uh, suffixes uh, the, the string with a new line character. That's why we get this uh, scrolling thing after a while, you know. So it, yeah, we, we get a new line every time. Yeah, here you can see sometimes it the, the direction leaks out or the key leaks out. So I think this, let's try this. Let's do this. Let's see if it leaks anything now. Yeah, sometimes it does. I'm not even sure if this is uh, the solution to this issue. Someone knows, please let me know. I'm very new to this. Well, now we don't get anything. Yeah, so it's probably that, that uh, we, well, whatever. Well, 
Anyways, we don't want to just print text and, and create like a gigantically long uh, list of strings here. Uh, let's init our screen here. Uh, and then we could also add, um, let's add Q. And that will uh, clean up and exit. We could even do exit here because that would also trigger the cleanup function. Uh, but whatever. So now we can press Q and that will clean the screen because now I added init screen, meaning we will not see the prompt or anything. And then it will look like this. I press up, but we still get the text here, you know. Pressing Q, cleans. Uh, um, but what if we wanted to print, just uh, change a single line here um, and, and not print a new line for every, every time, just uh, we can have the same string. Um, so it says direction and then it just changes this deed word for us. Uh, what we could do is just do echo n. Yeah, let's see what happens now. If we don't uh, pre uh, suffix it with a new line character, press up. Now you can see, now we don't got the new line character, but we still, uh, it just uh, prints at the same location all, all the time. Uh, here is where most people would probably just use uh, teapot. Uh, so, teapot uh, cup zero zero. Uh, cup is cursor position and then it's line and column so uh, here it will print this this thing and then it will move the cursor position to the top corner of the screen and that is also where where it is when we start when we go into this loop now i think it will somewhat work here and if i press left left press up it says up Press down, it says down, right, up. You see, it, it, it kind of works now because it every, every time it have printed this line, it moves the cursor back here and then it prints the line from the same location, just overwriting what's, what's uh, already there. Uh, but as you can see, uh, it doesn't work with up because up is just a two letter word and the other ones are uh, four and five uh, characters long here. So, but we could work around this by using uh, printf and then we can make a format string here uh, saying direction and then percentage uh, and it's uh, five characters right 5s so that that will make sure that this string is always five characters if it's uh, less than five characters it will pad it with uh, space Now pressing up, then it says up, and here we can see now it have padded up here with three spaces. Pressing right, down, left, up. And sure, th th this kind of works, um, but you probably in this case don't want to pad it with spaces. In instead, it would be better better to have the spaces on the right side of the word. And uh, you can do that by just uh, prefixing uh, the number here with a dash or a hyphen. And now up, left, right. Now we're getting somewhere, you know. But this is what I talked about. Uh, and now also, I pr if I hold the key, it doesn't look like anything is changing because it's, uh, it's the same word gets printed over and over. And it actually prints all of these characters here. It prints the word direction, it prints the word deed, it prints everything. So, uh, and that means it needs to update uh, a bunch of characters, needs to do a lot of more work that's actually needed here. What we really only need to do is change uh, the deed word and the direction could, could uh, be kept in place, you know. And here uh, you could also use uh, teapot. Um, I guess we should bring up a teapot documentation 
page or something. Teapot, command, bash, whatever. There are millions of these pages. Um, yeah, let's just take one of these. Or this is good. TLDP is, is a great uh, uh, resource for bash stuff, you know. And teapot, you can use it for all kinds of things. Uh, changing colors, moving position, and here we have the cup. Uh, save cursor position, restore cursor position. I guess we can use those. Yeah, let's try that. Let's do this. Echo n direction space. then teapot save cursor position now I think we can just print deed and then teapot restore cursor position I'm not sure I haven't tried this I don't know why I'm doing this so now we just say direction press right right and then I press left left yes because now it will here I saved the current cursor position, wherever that would be on the screen. Print the direction word, and then I restored to the saved position. And since we haven't, uh, it will always uh, be the same position, meaning after the space, after the word direction here. Then we don't have to print the word direction uh, since we already got it, you know. But we could also manually uh, uh, change uh, the, the cursor position here. C U P, and then we could do like two five. Let's see what happens now. Right, okay, and then I press uh, right again. Now it prints it here. So now this is uh, the second line uh, and five columns in. To me, it actually looks like the third line here. Ah, maybe it's zero indexed. Uh, the first line is probably zero, one, line two. And this is the fifth uh, column or character. So, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and this is also zero indexed. So it's actually the sixth. Uh, character is where it will start printing the direction. So this is another way you can do this. But there is actually a, a, a fourth uh, or another even better way because that will not involve teapot here. And that is to use uh, because teapot uh, it will produce uh, an escape code. Uh, and you can store those escape codes and then you can use printf to print them instead. Since we are already using printf here, if we, if we would prefix the direction here with the escape code to move the cursor uh, in the printf, that would mean we would use one less command here. And that makes a difference when you're making a game. Uh, these things really makes a difference. Uh, Especially when you're making like game of life uh, where I updated like sometimes hundreds hundred different uh, uh, characters or cells at the same time uh, Then I could do all of that with one single printf instead of having like hundreds of teapots moving the cursor and stuff that it, it made a big big difference mm. And to do that uh, Let's see my level select here because I don't remember this from the top of my head mm -mm -mm. here it is yeah, let's copy this it is not that uh, weird even if this looks much weirder than it have to be uh, I can say string here and here we say x and here we say y. This is uh, what, what you want to add to your printf. Backslash e, meaning escape character. Uh, and then the y position, 
semicolon, the X position. And Y position is the, the line number, X position is uh, the column. And then capital H, and then the string you want to print. So if we added this here, uh, like this, and then we could change this to two, and this to five. And we don't print this, we don't do, do this. Pressing up. Ah. Hmm, maybe it is because uh, I got it here in the, the format string. We could actually use uh, echo. That's what I've been. I also tested uh, like benchmarked uh, echo and printf, and they are almost exactly uh, 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 as fast as each other. No. Okay, we missed something. We missed something. Echo E N backslash E. Ah, ah, ah. It is uh, this uh, square bracket. We need that as well. Yes. Yeah, you see, it's weird. It's not like this is something that you just figure out. Uh, uh, this is how you write it. So backslash E, uh, left square bracket, Y position, semicolon, X position, capital H, and then the word, and then it will print that on a certain location. Now we also got the uh, format string thing there. Yeah, because we are doing echo en here, because I'm stupid. We're not doing printf anymore. Now it kind of works, you know. Uh, but now it isn't padded with, with the uh, printf function here. But the, the really cool thing with uh, this method is uh, that you can, can add a bunch of different positions uh, after one another here. Uh, well, let's do this so and then we can print the same word at uh, the fifth line and maybe the second line but at uh, the eighth column and maybe the first line and uh, fourth column pressing left right you see it updates a lot uh, uh, several different positions at the same time here we are using echo and just uh, yeah, so you get it here. You, you can um, uh, uh, update a lot of, of uh, cells at the same time uh, with just a single command, just uh, um, modifying this output string here. That is uh, kind of the magic <laughs> writing efficient, somewhat efficient games in Bash is using this method. And trying to do this echo as few times as possible and even if you want to go really uh, deep you, you also don't want to update any unnecessary uh, cell we get back to that uh, I guess now I don't know how long I have recorded here because I am using OBS and I'm not sure if we can do you can see it here 43 minutes yeah, I guess uh, we make a break here then. Uh, this is the intro to the Bud Lames games series. Uh, we are making a game. We haven't done anything useful yet. We still haven't made the, the level select screen, but that's easy. Next, now, now we got the foundation. Now we know uh, our tools here. Let's uh, use these tools to make that uh, level select uh, screen something like that that i showed you in the last video or whatever last video in the, in the you know you know the, the game the tetra tetra mini is what i have been calling it maybe textris would be a name also i don't know but this this is what we want to do we want to be able to move a cursor and select different uh, uh, items like this 
And just knowing how to do that, you know, then you could, um, you, you can make games just by doing that. Navigating a maze or whatever. Well, there we see an issue there. Why is this selected here? I don't know. Yeah, it's not perfect. It's not perfect. Nothing is perfect, but it kind of works. Whatever. So, see you in the next video. Like and subscribe. Have a great day. Bye, bye, bye.